Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are talking Sigma FP and my current Sigma FP setup, which I've got right here. So the FP is an absolute beast of a mini cinema camera. It is a full frame raw sensor that records to uh, Samsung T5 drives. I get over an hour of raw on these small little cards. Uh, it has HDMI out doesn't have uh, XLR, doesn't have um, variable ND filters um, or a flippable screen. So this rig here is a sort of an attempt to make up for the FP's shortcomings and create a very usable um, functional uh, rig that I'm able to you know, shoot very much run and gun on. First thing I did was I put a cage on. I was gonna try and get the small rig cage, but they were all out of stock. So I got eight SIN, which I think is from Europe. Uh, it was like $100. Then I have the small rig handle on it. This cage doesn't really have a good place to put the uh, T5 holder. So I added another bolt down here um, and another cheese plate or just a cheese strip, I guess, to bolt that to. Um, then I have the uh, that coming out. This goes up to a um, TV Logic uh, five inch F5A monitor which gives me false color, um, gives me uh, focus peaking, a bunch of stuff like that. It's powered by a single MP battery. On the front of this, we have the excellent uh, Sigma Cine um, 35 millimeter prime. And on front of that, we have the Polar Pro map box uh, with the variable ND in it. So you, it's a sort of a two stage process where you put um, the ND in the front here, then you put a second uh, polarizer ND in the uh, other filter tray. And by rotating this dial, you're able to go from two to five stops of ND. The matte box also comes with this very cool carbon fiber flag, uh, which also functions as a lens cap to protect um, your ND because it's a pretty big, delicate piece of glass there on the front. And I've attached the Polar Pro not by 15 millimeter rails, which would add bulk and size to the rig, but just by a, um, screw on uh, front of lens filter, it screws onto the Sigma, then this place is on the top, you screw it down and uh, stays there. I'm just using the uh, Sigma's internal battery. I get about 50 minutes from it, depending on how much shooting I do. But uh, between the two of them, they charge in about 40 minutes. So if you're near power, you can just keep swapping between the two of them and shoot all day. It is a nice little package, um, very light, uh, very easily handheld. Um, the swivel, the mount that I have on here is tension mounted. So you're able to, with just one hand, adjust uh, the placement of it. So you can go from a low shot to a high shot without having to um, unscrew anything or use tools. And you see I have the handle on backwards. That's because a lot of the weight's at the front of the camera. So if it does slip, it falls into my hand. If you have the handle around the other way, as it slips, it falls out of your hand. I've tried a bunch of different um, HDMI cables. Uh, this one seems the best of so a bunch of bad options. Um, you can't really run it up the handle or else it gets in the way. Um, at least on the TV Logic, the um, input's on the side, so you need something that comes up that way. Uh, I haven't found it too bad yet. Most of the weight actually is in the lens, uh, but because it's manual focus and manual iris, I sort of just leave it at uh, ISO 200 um, and adjust my aperture and my um, polarizer or my variable ND. It is a very nice little setup. Um, I've got a lot out of it and been able to get a bunch of great run and gun shots for a commercial I'm working on, for a short film I'm working on, and they cut pretty flawlessly with the C200 or even the C500 Mark II, right? This is a raw full frame uh, 4K cinema camera that you can literally pick up with one finger. That's my current Sigma FP setup. Thank you very much for watching. You can find links to all the gear in the description below, and I'll see you next time.